We're going to bring on our next guest um, who uh, the other day had an interesting interaction with John Fetterman. Um, his name is Dan Kovalik. He's a labor and human rights lawyer living in Pittsburgh. He taught international human rights at the University of Pittsburgh School of Law, and he's the author of several books, including Cancel the Book, The Progressive Case Against Cancel Culture. So welcome, Dan. Thank you for having me. Of Good course, to see thank you, you so much for joining. And wanted to just start off by showing this clip of you um, confronting Senator John Fetterman about opposing a ceasefire. We're going to show the clip, but is there anything that you want to tell us before we show it, to set it up? I mean, I'll just say that, okay, so this was a ticketed event, um, which I had a ticket for. Senator Fetterman was hosting an event for a woman named Sarah in a Murata, who's running for county council. She's a good person. I've already voted for mail-in ballot. Um, uh, but a few of us concerned about Palestine and Fetterman's position on Palestine went there with the intention to discuss with him this issue. We actually did not want to be disruptive because we do like Sarah in Murata, who the event was for. So it was decided I would just go and try to have a conversation with him about this, and this is what happened. Why aren't you supporting a humanitarian ceasefire? You know, I'm with this team. Like I can talk to him. No, I can talk to I voted for him. I'm sorry, this is a democracy. It absolutely is. Yeah, absolutely yeah, is. but kind of, sort of. Why? 10,000 people in Gaza have been killed. Half are children. The Pope's calling for a ceasefire. The UN is called for it. I'm just asking you. You're a good guy. I voted for you. I know you're a nice guy. This is important. You need to leave. Here, can I give you a phone? Here. Yo, he just assaulted him. He just assaulted him. You need to leave. He just assaulted him. He just assaulted him. He was just talking to him. He assaulted him. Great Rolling Stones song, by the I'm way. I'm a big but, Stones fan, and yeah, yeah, cue the Stones. That was yeah, awesome. Very yeah. good. Who who was that? I thought he was a, he worked for Fetterman because well, he said I, that he I, had, but he he doesn't. I thought he did too. I've now heard he might have been the owner of the restaurant, but he look he was clearly. You know, talking to Fetterman, I mean, clearly he was, you know, at least acting on behalf of what he thought Fetterman wanted at that moment. Um, and as you see, Fetterman certainly didn't stop him um, and never came out to say, you know, hey, sorry, let's talk. And hasn't reached out since then, you know, um, and neither is his staff. So that's that's the, it, you know. And this is because he had tweeted public. He had tweeted that he opposed a ceasefire. Yeah, Correct. he's been very vocal about not wanting a ceasefire. You know, he's taking the line that supporting a ceasefire would be basically supporting Hamas, and we need to let Israel do what they need to do. And um, he receives, of course, a lot of money from from APAC. Uh, though, you know, he's been look. I, I don't want to say he's a disappointment because I sound naive, but you know, he sold himself as a man of the people. He used to be mayor of Braddock a tiny steel town outside Pittsburgh. And he prided himself on trying to rebuild it for the people. And he was one of the people, you know, he wears a, he's a famous hoodie. for wearing a hoodie to the Senate. Um, you know, but he, not surprisingly, once he became Senator, he, he's just like everybody else. But, you know, I tried to appeal to his decency and humanity and that, right. that that's how it went. So it didn't work though, apparently. No. And he hasn't reached out. No. Okay. And, and, you know, he's made some statements to the press. And what he's said is um, he just tried to distance himself from the guy who threw me out. And, and he said, I'm very good at talking to my constituents, even about this issue. And he said that he didn't say, I'm sorry that that happened or whatever. The takeaway from this is never trust adult men in hoodies or in shorts. <laughs> and definitely not in both. Yes. Or, or a guy dressed up like Fetterman. You notice the guy was dressed 
The, yeah. the guy who threw me out had a fake yeah, bald cap. That's what I meant the shorts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The whole thing was absurd. I mean, I I'm almost embarrassed because the whole it was co co you know comedic in a certain way. I thought it was like the Big Lebowski or no, something. No, I, I would say, um, at the risk of exaggerating, I do believe these protests are having an impact. Uh, you see, Bernie's kind of Bernie Sanders is kind of Biden's left flank. So, Biden, the past couple of days, has reiterated Israel has to abide by international law. Then Bernie says, just a little bit to the left, he says, Israel's killing thousands of innocent civilians. And I would think that it's because of, you can't prove it in a one-to-one -one right. correlation, but the demonstrations, remember, Bernie's Jewish. And that demonstration in Grand Central Station had to have hit home for him. It was beautiful, yeah. There was no way that that didn't touch him. And the demonstration in London over the weekend, they estimated a million people. You know, that gets back to Biden. That, And also the fact that in Michigan, Arabs are now saying, Arabs and Muslims were not voting for Biden in right. November. And that's a swing state. I think you can't measure it with any kind of precision, but the thing that you did, the demonstrations, it's not what one wishes, the impact one wishes, but it's having an impact. I've had so many odd conversations. For example, the super in my building, a painter, because I had some damage from rain, they were in my apartment. And we never talk politics. We talk about the apartment. We talk about other people in the building. Never politics. And this time, the super said to me, so what do you think about what's going on in Gaza? And a lot of people are really wondering what is going on there. And, of course, the powers that be, they don't like that. Right. They like the politics be to be decided behind closed doors between them. They're important. They have the Ivy League degrees. And everybody else, they have only one responsibility on November 4th to go and vote. And otherwise, stay out. But now the people aren't staying out. And uh, I, uh, I'm not unrealistic, but I'm not cynical either. I see there are possibilities here, and we should all try to uh, turn up the heat. Uh, but the, the demonstration in particular, well, the one in London and the one in Grand Central Station was breathtaking. I just want to make sure people see what you're talking about. This is Grand Central. Um where people took over. Massive demonstrations calling for a ceasefire in Gaza continued this weekend, including here in New York City. On Friday night, thousands of members of Jewish Voice for Peace New York City and their allies shut down the main terminal of Grand Central Station during rush hour. It's the largest sit-in protest the city has seen in over two decades. Many wore shirts that said, not in our name. Banners were unfurled reading Palestinians should be free and Israelis demand ceasefire now. One sign read, never again for anyone. The multiracial intergenerational movement says about 400 people were arrested, including rabbis, famous actors, and elected officials. The occupation has got to go away. Hey, hey, ho, ho, the occupation has got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, the occupation has got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, the occupation has got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, the occupation has got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho
the spot. Okay, cool. I couldn't get inside because they had closed it off from the subway. So I was in one of the entrances, then they had people leave. Then a bunch of us were outside, but this is from inside. Ooh, that's quite a large I don't number remember the outside. number. I wanted to be inside. Yeah. This is the second time an, 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 an event of this sort happened. After 9-11, and I was quite, I was already a mature adult in nine, at the time of 9-11. At the time of 9-11, I thought politics in the United States is going to be dead for the next 20 years, that the country is going to move radically to the right, and we might as well just give up. And of course, the leadership did, uh, Bush, Cheney, Rumsfeld, they exploited the opportunity in every manner they could. However, it was a fact that not so long after 9-11, not so long, there were the largest demonstrations in world history opposing the entry of, uh, opposing the war in Iraq uh, in March, 2003. And so it told you people were able to bounce back from the shock of 9-11, get their rational bearings and understand no, we don't want a war. Now, obviously, it didn't stop the war, but it still was a testament to the capacity of ordinary people to react with shock, react with trauma, but nonetheless, in short order, get their political bearings right. I mentioned that because the se second time after October 7th, I did not believe it would be possible to talk to another Jewish person. That was such a shock. The magnitude. I thought, this is it. We're now back to square one. So imagine my surprise, my bewilderment, when I saw that demonstration in Grand Central Station that young Jews who came from families, I'm sure many of the parents and grandparents were so outraged by what happened, so furious. And yet the young people, they got their bearings right. You can acknowledge something horrible happened October 7th, but guess what? That doesn't justify what came after. Right. And Let's remember what came before. Let's also remember the history that preceded October 7th. And so it was deeply stirring, deeply moving, a testament to Jews in particular, but to humanity in general, the capacity to rationally, as it were, size up the situation and to proceed. I saw Jews with their kippah. Yeah, their a, lot of, a lot of people were wearing yarmulkes. I, I, was, I, was, I was flabbergasted. Next week, yeah. I'm doing a panel show with a bunch of people, including Roz Pacheski, who's 81 mm -hmm. and who was arrested there, and some other young person from Jewish Voice for Peace. They're going to be on the panel, too. And then Orthodox rabbi. And a reform rabbi, they're all going to be on this panel I'm doing mm -hmm. next week because I want to show people what, you know, th the Jews who are not represented by APAC.